is a living, breathing thing. The Assumption Parish sinkhole, more than 200 days after it mysteriously began swallowing up the swamp, hundreds of residents are still under a mandatory evacuation order. As Katie Moore reports, the cavern that caused it is still collapsing, leaving Bayou Corn residents wondering if there will ever be an end in sight. Bayou Corn has always been a peaceful place. We could drop the boat right there and just take off to go fishing. It was just like a paradise. But now it feels downright empty. Jamie Weber is gone. A sign on her old home says it's thanks to Texas Brine. She had no idea that she was putting her mobile home on land on top of an underground salt dome, one full of caverns used to make brine or salt water, others used to store hazardous, potentially explosive gases. Geophysicists now say the western side of one of the brine caverns is collapsing, filling in from deep in the earth, causing the sinkhole at the surface to expand and contract. On October 25th, <clears throat> out of our home. She and some of the 350 evacuated Bayou Corn residents packed a joint legislative hearing in Baton Rouge in recent days looking for answers. Many of the ones they keep getting are conflicting and confusing, especially from the state and the company that once mined the collapsing salt cavern, Texas Brine. Senator, the cause of the sinkhole is the subject of pending litigation. At this point, I don't think it's proper to have any discussion about what the cause is and whether we accept what anyone has said regarding the cause of the sinkhole. The cavern collapse led to the sinkhole and created a path for the natural gas and the crude oil to come to the surface. That's Louisiana Department of Natural Resources Secretary Stephen Schutz. He slipped out a back door after the hearing without giving us the chance to ask him any questions. The sinkhole is constantly changing. It changes every time we go out there. Not Gary Hecox is an engineer consulting with DNR about what to do about the sinkhole. It's uncharted territory. The cavern was 3,400 feet deep, which is deeper than any known cavern failure impacting the surface in the international record. Meaning nowhere in the world has a brine cavern this large collapsed, and it's not finished yet. We still have 450 feet to fill. How long is it going to take to fill this up? At, at one foot per day, we're looking at an ongoing event that's still going to run over a year. Every time it shifts, recently installed seismic monitors pick up tremors like little earthquakes. When it does, big bubbles of natural gas, vegetation, and crude oil are released to the surface. They call it a burp. It appears that the sand and gravel that's in the bottom of the sinkhole breaks up a large gas bubble into many small bubbles, just like an aquarium, and that is a good thing, because if you get a single bubble up and have an ignition source, you can have a flashover. An explosion. Instead, those little bubbles are coming out all around the actual sinkhole site, with 20 new sites spotted in the last month. Nine months after the bubble sites first surfaced, Texas Brine started installing vent wells to alleviate the pressure underground. You can see some of them burning in 15 places around Bayou Corn. We continue to install relief wells as fast as we can, and we'll keep doing so as long as they continue to be effective. The problems in Bayou Corn aren't just ones you can see, but what you can't see. Take these guide wires, for example. During a recent rain, bubbles started coming up from around them. That's when residents knew the problems weren't just far off in the bayou. A house acts like a tent, and so if it's migrating up through the soil and it's being caught in the house, it's building up concentrations in the house. And then if it reaches explosive level, then one little spark in the house would set it off. Nick Romero now has five DEQ monitors installed in his house to measure natural gas and other chemicals. We have had our grandkids, and now we can't. I love the fish, and now I don't want to. They're struggling not just with the instability underground, but in their lives. Romero and some others haven't evacuated, but Weber did in October. Once they told us that they wanted to put monitors in our house, and that we'd have to live like, to me, like lab rat. Uh, there was no way for my kids to grow. And Weber says they feel forgotten, especially by Governor Bobby Jindal, who has yet to visit the sinkhole site or talk about it. He's promoting plants around the area, chemical plants, and he was in the area and he wouldn't, still, still to this day, does not acknowledge it.
In October and November, Jindal announced two chemical plant expansions a few miles from Bayou Corn, one in Geismar and one in Donaldsonville. But in six months, no visit to the sinkhole site. Where is he? Where is Jindal? You know, he's all over the United States, but he can't come uh, 40 minutes south of Baton Rouge and visit. As these Environmental Action Network photos show, when the sinkhole first appeared, it was just 400 feet in diameter. So far, it's swallowed nine acres. Scientists say the worst case scenario is it could swallow 40 acres. Even if it does, many, like Weber, are now just hoping Texas Brine will buy them out so they can move on. Katie Moore, Eyewitness News. Governor Jindal's press secretary released this statement in response to the question, why hasn't the governor visited Bayou Corn? He said, quote, we've received regular updates on the situation. Through my orders, agencies have deployed an abundance of resources to the sinkhole area. We ordered GOSEP, Louisiana State Police, DNR, DEQ, and DOTD to Bayou Corn to provide constant oversight, work with parish officials to resolve the situation, and hold Texas Brine accountable for the problems caused by its failed capital. Another call on here, Jason. Can you just stay on the line, man? Uh, we'll keep this rolling. Hi, this is Andre with Situation of Preparedness. Uh, who am I speaking with? Hi, guys. This is uh, Christina from Nuked Radio. Oh, Nuked Radio. Christina, you also have the uh, Facebook page, Rad Chick uh, Radiation Mitigation and Research. Yes, and this is the awesome. first time I've actually caught your show. Great job with the information. Oh, oh we thanks. Need to get it you know, we try to get it out there. We we, we're really trying to get this out here. It's a kind of a brand new network. We've really kind of um, been pushing it lately, and we're getting a lot of great partners, and I'm glad that you called in this show. The other person that we have on the line, I'm not sure if you were listening live, but um, it's Jason from Alabama, Alabama Bushcraft, and uh, he was just recently taped a uh, show with Tuesday Preppers, so we are kind of talking about that, and then we just kind of – we're at the point where we're discussing how to get this information out and the tinfoil hat concept and people putting their heads in the sand and how we can avoid that. So, Jason, we're going to keep you on the line. Christina, I just want to welcome you to the show um, and kind of explain what, what you do with Nuked Radio and uh, um, what you feel like some of the hazards or, or preparedness tips you can provide. Well, with our, our show, we started it originally to um, teach people about the Fukushima disaster and what they can do to protect themselves and their families. And we've kind of expanded quite a bit since then, since we have uh, so many people that are following our site now that uh, we needed to include a lot of the geological events that are happening. The sinkhole, of course, is a big one. Plus, there's yeah, we, radioactive yeah, that's waste huge. that's been stored there. And my concern for the people in the area is all the families who have not been evacuated so far, I think at this point, really need to uh, consult with attorneys to make sure that their rights are being protected and that they will um, have the funding uh, that's needed if they do need to evacuate in the short term because, you know, the, the seismic activity there kind of waxes and wanes depending on what's going on underground. The geologists that are studying the problem, and there's a number of them from around the world, have never seen this happen before, and the people in the area are um, at risk from a lot of the gases that they're being exposed to, primarily hydrogen sulfide, which has been detected, methane, and then there's a possibility of an explosive event because of the large underground um, gas bubble that actually right. extends for miles around the site. What, are, what exactly from your research are they storing in that bubble? Are they trying to store, I guess? Well, the, the salt dome itself is actually like the size of Mount Everest, and there's numerous ones that are all connected all the way to where the Mercondo Well um, BP disaster occurred. And okay. there's some thought that maybe a new fault line has been activated in that area and that that could be causing some of the problems at the sinkhole. But there's a number of caverns that have been hollowed out inside, and they store brine and they store toxic stuff that never should see the light of day again. And unfortunately, a lot of that is pipe scale, radioactive pipe scale from oil drilling. And um, they've never had, you know, really a collapse of, of one of these things before. So, you know, there's yeah, problems Jason, with the, that's, the aquifers. I'm sorry, being, Jason, that's, uh, that's right down your alley there, brother. Yeah. You listen to this, man? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay, well, you down there, you yeah, know where the all real, the drill rigs are. 
<laughs> yeah, the real problem for the people in that area is what they're being exposed to in their water supply, in their food supply, in the air, you know, whether or not the EPA is doing adequate monitoring or not, and, and what's going to happen with this seismic situation. And hopefully it doesn't turn into a Lake Pinoir, um, you know, occurrence that happened in the 80s where, you know, the, the whole um, cavern collapsed underneath yeah. a lake that's just 50 miles to the west of there. I mean, that would just be horrendous. But even if it stays the way it is now, there's still a lot of gas coming out of the ground, and it's poisoning everything around it. Right. And as far as tributaries that kind of lead off of that site, what, what kind of rivers are around there? What's the next town downstream? I don't know the exact town downstream, but I can tell you there are a couple people on YouTube and on the web that are following this very closely. Mr. Comet Watch has a great website. He puts okay. out videos on YouTube and also um, Idaho Picker is a channel called Logic Before Authority and he's All been right. following the thing called very closely too and then there's a couple of websites like The Advocate and um, the Assumption Parish Police Jury that post daily information and we try to cover that as well because we there are so many people that are following the story and and are paying attention to what's going on down there. There's also a Bayou Corn Sinkhole page that's run by a, a local who posts everything. Um, you know, she goes to all the meetings and, and tapes everything and puts it out on Facebook and fields questions from people. Okay, so, I think uh, I've seen a, that there on your page. There are a lot more yeah. people paying attention now than there were a few months ago. And, you know, it's one of those things like the BP disaster, like Fukushima, now this uh, collapsing, you know, salt dome situation. There's no technology right. to fix any of this stuff. No, they're actually pulling equipment off the site. Last report I saw. Yeah, yeah, they had to move the equipment and people out until they got a handle on on where the seismic activity is occurring. It could be right. that walls of the caverns are collapsing underground, or it could be gas movement too, which right. they've recorded. Or, or it before. could be, or worse yet, it could be something. Uh, developed from fracking in the area, and that could affect the, the, the seismic. I, I'm sure it does. I know that fracking pretty much causes earthquakes, so. Yeah. Uh, that, that, and, you know, there's been a long-standing history of the, uh, the politicians that cover up really any bad news that has to do with the oil and gas industry since so much of their economy in, in Louisiana relies on it. So right. the people aren't getting the information from mainstream sources like they should, and that's why a lot of them don't even have any idea that it's going on. But I've heard from people that live a considerable distance from that sinkhole site, 40 to 50 miles, that they are having methane bubbling up in their yard. Wow. So um, All right. you know, we don't so really know what now. the extent of this yeah. is. Well, we got about yep. uh, one minute left in our stream here. Hey, Jason, you had a quick question? Um, no, I'd just like to tell everybody I want, I want to give them my uh, YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, give uh, us a plug. Uh, Alabama Bushcraft 1 on YouTube. I'm putting new videos up. I just started my channel back over, and alabamabushcraft.com, it'll be open on the 15th. And then you're going to be airing on Duke Day Preppers on the last Tuesday of March or the first Tuesday of April, that's correct? That's it. All right, thanks, Jason, for calling in. Hey, Christina, uh, what... Can we get some uh, uh, sites that uh, that you want to uh, promo right now? Sure. If you go to uh, FukushimaFacts.com on the web, there's links to everything on there for my Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. And Nuked Radio airs Tuesday and Thursday, 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on UCYTV. Okay. Thanks a lot, Christina. Thanks for taking my Appreciate call. you having on the so um, we'll get you on again for a little bit more time. All right. Thanks. Stay safe, everyone.